Greetings, guitar builder fans. This is Dave Lynch, the uh, head luthier in tech at Guitar Workshop in Midtown, Sacramento, California, 95 miles northeast of San Francisco, just down the hill from beautiful Lake Tahoe. Today is the day that we pull all the parts together and build this incredible Warmoth Telecaster uh, neck and body. Uh, if you've ever been to the website, warmoth.com, W-A-R-M-O-T-H, as listed as you can see here, uh, these guys build phenomenal licensed parts and other things. And I was shopping on their gallery page, and they built this incredible, uh, beautiful uh, chambered Telecaster body. Right now we're looking at the neck. The neck I had uh, ordered after the body. You can see the uh, quilt maple headstock, flame maple the Godo end adjust with side adjust uh, uh, truss rod. It's a compound radius fingerboard, 12 inches at the nut, 16 at the neck joint. Uh, a matching quilt headstock, um, gloss finish, amber tint. I've got abalone inlay dots. The side dots do glow in the dark. And it is, it's a beautiful standard seat contour. Very nice neck. They did an impeccable job. It's routed for uh, Grover locking keys. Next, we're going to take a look at the body. This is the one that I saw at the uh, on the gallery page. It's a mahogany body. It's chambered, weighs in at 3.25 pounds. It's a beautiful, incredible quilt maple top. Um, and uh, with multiple contours, got the belly carve, the arm carve, the uh, cutaway carve, and the heel the neck plate tilt. Um, it's got a masked binding. It's got a beautiful purple sunburst finish. I had them do that same uh, veneer on the headstock as well with the purple sunburst finish. The body, uh, as it sat from the website, I had them cut for just a standard Telecaster Electronics, uh, was $540. To have the neck built to match, which took about six weeks, that was another $531. Something to keep in mind, as you can see here, is that more oftentimes than not, when you have this, these parts made together, the neck is too big to push into the neck pocket. If you try to do that, you will break the little tiny tab on the treble side uh, that extends out. And it took quite a bit of fussing around with very delicate surgery here to make that neck fit into that pocket and have a perfectly smooth joint that you, you can't even feel the bump. In fact, I managed to get it down. The luck was on my side to literally lacquer thin. Uh, so in any case, the body comes with the uh, holes drilled for the Telecaster uh, bushings uh, and the electronics, but there's no shielding. Here you can see I'm going to mask it up because I want to do a, a super shield coat. Uh, two coats in the electronic cavity. Uh, pickup cavities, not too worried about that. Um, I'm using, you know, the, the pickup lines are shielded and it's not too much exposed space and running all that extra cabling. I haven't really noticed enough of a significant uh, sound improvement to run a ground line shielding all the way up onto the uh, pickup cavities. The pickup itself is pretty shielded with the bridge metal plate. So anyways, we've got the uh, neck going on to the uh, service block here because when these necks come, uh, the maple necks, the lacquer is sprayed right over the fret tops. And uh, so you don't really want to play it like that. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to max, uh, mount that neck onto a service block. And just check the thickness of the lacquer and see what's going on here. But what I do have to do is I have to get in there with a razor and scribe every single fret by hand very carefully. And remove the lacquer from the frets. And uh, the fret tops are, even though they're pressed in really well, the fret tops really are not quite even. And so we have to perform at the shop what we call a new level. Uh, for a rosewood fingerboard, it's 125 bucks. For a worn neck stock that's already been out and played, it's 185 bucks. On a maple fingerboard like this, because we have to spend so much time scribing off the lacquer, it's 185 bucks to do a new level on this guy. And it really makes a huge difference in the detail action work that we can get to level even a brand new fret job. It makes the performance, the whole business end of the guitar, great to do this, take this one step. It is a little bit expensive, but it really does make a difference in the way the guitar performs. You can get the action really low. It's glassy smooth. Bending notes is super easy. And uh, if you use a little lubricant like the GHS Fast Fret or Fingeries, a little light spray on there from time to time to prevent 
um, friction between the string and the fret. Your frets and your strings will last a lot longer. Always clean them off when you're done playing so you can get the uh, uh, mineral deposits from your sweat and salt off the string and fingerboard so you don't have abrasives grinding between your string and fret top. So you can see here now we're going to the polishing phase. Uh, we do use a Jewelers Rouge abrasive mask up. You don't want to breathe this stuff if you're a tech. You want to make sure you wear eye protecting because that uh, cloth does blow up into the air and you don't want to breathe those particulates in. And it's time to open the shop. I started nice and early in the morning with staff's coming in. And so, uh, so I buff them all out by hand so that we have this super beautiful, perfectly crowned, uh, gleaming... Uh, finish on your fret tops so that your strings glide effort effortlessly across the top. So now I'm going to try and remove any of the extra rouge and, and kind of buff out the, the final phase of the neck. Take a look at that. Put a coating of a nice uh, Zymol wax. This is a, an, a, an acrylic finish. And I know some people prefer the nitro cell finish. I love the nitro cell finish as they breathe. Uh, the acrylic is okay. They're really incredibly durable. They take up a lot of abuse. If you want, we can cut the finish off in the back and oil it. I like the oil finishes as well. And now we've got the body coming back in. We have done the uh, shielding, and it's time to put the uh, bushings in the back. Uh, same thing with the neck pocket. The lacquer adds thickness to the route, and you don't want to just try and pound those bushings in because you will break the lacquer. And so uh, the uh, bushing install just qu requires a little bit of hand routing to open up that hole so those bushings will sit nice and snug so they don't fall out the back, uh, but they don't break the lacquer or the wood. You can see on this body that uh, Hormuth did an incredible job of masking off the maple top, and so it gives almost like a binding edge look to it um, between the nice purple tint and the mahogany back. And so I'm now marking the lower bout and the upper driver side bout for strap buttons. Uh, you want to make sure you pre-drill your holes and so that everything fits nice and tight. I'm going to use a little dab of uh, wood glue to hold the uh, strap button screws in. We don't want that thing floating around or coming loose on the customer. You don't want this thing dropping off on a gig or coming apart. That's never a good thing, is it? And now we're going to start loading some components into the electronics cavity. Um, I did try to do my best to get both cameras running here. We're going to run out of one camera in the not-too-distant future. The ION ran out of juice, and then we'll just have the zoom camera from uh, uh, from this angle. up Here's the ion camera. We're going to run out of ion in a little while. Sorry about the drawer blockage there, but I was going trying to get this thing done. And uh, loading the electronic cavity, we just did a standard uh, CTS 250K uh, volume and tone control and a Switchcraft three-way switch. Just wired it like a Strat. And uh, everything's nice. And I use uh, solid ground connections. I don't just rely on the cavity or like some guys do on a, a foil plate to be the ground bus. I hardwire my ground buses, make sure that everything's nice and quiet. Um, I used on this guitar a the Babix full contact uh, bridge on this guy. Um, really, really nice product. It's super lightweight. You get a lot of string energy into the instrument. Um, they, uh, they run about for the, for the black one, they run about 140 bucks. Uh, you can get them for 135. I've seen them as cheap as, uh, 95 bucks on eBay. You know, I mean, we sell them at the shop. Um, we try to give the best prices we can, um, to be competitive. Uh, we have all these components you can see on the back wall. There have a wall of parts. Um, but the Babix bridge is really excellent. Uh, I also decided to wire in the uh, Seymour Duncan uh, 5.2 pickups. Really beautiful sounding pickup system. Uh, the uh, the 5.2s uh, to buy to get the set. Um, you know they're like 95 bucks retail, right? Not 95 bucks street for the bridge pickup, and about 85 bucks for the neck position. So you know you're looking at about 150 bucks for a set of pickups, 140 right around there. Um, 
great sounding pickups, super clean, beautiful clarity, a little more output than a standard uh, stock tele pickup. Um, they're nice and quiet too, actually just a little bit of shielding in there. Um, I also do use the Belden cable on the output end, and I also did shield the uh, back cover plate as well to try and make the whole instrument as quiet as possible. Looks like that's done. Now we're going to uh, probably put the neck on here pretty soon. Yep, here it comes. So we want to make sure that the uh, neck pocket screws, there's no wood poking out. Get that neck drilled on, uh, screwed on nice and tight. And uh, we can start putting tuning keys in. Oh, looks like I'm, there we go. So I use the uh, Grover Rotomatic locking keys in there. I really like the way they look. They feel great. They're very accurate and smooth. There's no backlash. And the locking thumb wheel is very comfortable in your hand. Grover locking keys, like I said, on other things, you can find those uh, anywhere between $70 and $95, $96 uh, from a variety of different suppliers. We carry them as well. I went with the uh, new uh, Ernie Ball Paradigm strings. Um, this was the first time I used them. I have to say that I am really impressed with these strings. They are pricey, but they have a really nice springy feel, a little bit more flexible uh, than uh, the standard string, and they sound great. Uh, they seem to be wearing pretty well. Um, I've got them on a couple of instruments. I got one with a Floyd Rose on it. They seem to be working pretty well. I haven't broken one yet. We'll see how that goes. And uh, we're getting close to being done here. So this was uh, this assembly took uh, about six and a half hours in total of uh, a fussing around with, not including the time I spent researching the parts um, and. Uh, unpackaging the components but just in the assembly time the setup work um, and and testing and lo lots of little fiddling adjustments just to make it really really nice this is the third job I I have done in the Talica in this specific design I did one for two other local guitarists uh, one in Cherry Sunburst and one also in this Purple Burst um, and they turned out great next Warmoth project we're gonna do this a very similar de design but we're also gonna put in a uh, Wilkinson VS100G in the back. Yep, a tremolo telly with a uh, a standard uh, with a 5.2 in the back. And uh, I'm not going to reveal right now what I'm going to do in the neck position, but it's going to be pretty bizarre, something that I have not yet seen. And the Seymour Duncan guys are going to build something custom for us for the neck position for the uh, tremolo telly. So anyway, just cutting the nut slots uh, for this guy to make, make the action just right. And uh, with the Godo side heel adjust, it is possible to make this thing really accurate. Uh, we want to make it the pickup height just right. The sweet spot is uh, getting as much output as you can get out of the guitar without string suck from the magnets. You don't want this, the pickups to pull your string down. When it rotates, if the string pickup is too close, the magnetic field will pull that string down, and when it rotates, it'll make a wobbling sound. You don't want that. So just rechecking a few things in the cavity, making sure my connections are nice and solid. I like everything to be perfect, and I always sometimes recheck my the details. Everything's looking good. And doing some height adjustment here, trying to get the curve right. <coughs> Pardon me. This is the plan in part. It's got to perform. Yes, I too am a working musician. I take my instruments out in the field and, and I gig with them. I play with a local blues band called Dr. Rock and the Stuff. You can find a bunch of our videos on YouTube. And uh, I also have my own fusion band called the Dave Lynch Group. And you can find that on YouTube as well. Here it comes. Looks like we're going to get a test drive. Here it comes.
Holy smokes. That's a guitar. Now that's a Telecaster. Yeah. And so when I brought the guitar to the bandstand, one of the first things the guys asked me is, so what do you Telecaster? That is the question. What do you Telecaster? So anyway, a little more road testing here and and uh, make sure everything's good, some fine details, got to clean up, got to get the jeweler's rouge off my fingertips from the polish, little stuff like that. And, um, and then adjusting a strap, I sell the Henry Heller straps. They're really nice quality uh, from OMG Music. And I uh, got to fit that, make sure that's perfect, and get this guy ready and take it out to the bandstand and see what it does. Um, you know, it's one of those pretty guitars where I may just have to keep this one. You know, I don't know. I, I've, I built so many of these for customers. I, this is probably the, I've built over a hundred Warmoth guitars for a lot of my customers in the past. And just so you know, a guitar workshop, 3248 J street in Sacramento, California. Um, we, our 21st anniversary is coming up. We've been in business that long. I came to Sacramento in 1976, started working with a guy named Gary Cooper down with, at Lou's Music on K street. And uh, he was uh, formerly of Alembic, an incredible builder, uh, and um, a lot of great things. So here it is. Check it out. Bye, Carl. Have a great week. There it is. There it is. The purple caster, the love caster, whatever you want to call it. So uh, I'll uh, do a price list, give you a breakdown of the cost of all the components and uh, labor assembly time. And uh, the next project is to uh, bring this to the bandstand so we can see what it sounds like on the gig. Uh, my name is Dave Lynch, and I own Guitar Workshop here in Sacramento, California. And uh, thanks for watching. Thank you for watching and sticking around. My name is Dave Lynch. I'm at Guitar Workshop in Sacramento, California. You can find us at guitarworkshoponline.com or bookthestuff.com. Stop by and see us and say hello.